Hey everybody, Nerdy Transformed here again. And today I thought we would do one of my favorites from the delu deluxe classes from the movie lines, Deep Desert Brawl from the Revenge of the Fallen line. Now this figure is a repaint slash redeco, or remold actually, of the deluxe class brawl that came out in the original movie 07 line. The difference here is, well, in the original one, he's kind of got more of a jungle, dark green military colors. Here he has, well, desert camouflage, which does look very nice. A couple other things is that, if you know anything about this figure, he has an auto transformation for his head right in here. And on the original, the gears were clear plastic and broke very easily. But this one's a redeco because they actually fixed that. They actually, the gears, and the auto transformation gears inside are no longer clear plastic. And the arms, the, uh, there's a special weapon on the arm, right? You can see it right there. It no longer has an issue. So there's a, basically it's the same mold, just different paint, and a lot of its issues have been fixed. Mine is a little off because uh, you might see these pieces right here are white. These are supposed to be like a brown, I believe. But I actually took these pieces. I basically had a, one of these and one of the forest ones, the forest dark green brawls, and both of them were missing pieces, so I just took the pieces off the the, the other one and put them in place here. But besides that, it's exactly the same figure. I just have these white pieces instead, which don't stick out too. They do stick out a little bit, but eh, that's my own figure. So yeah, this is Brawl. You can see he's like a realistic military tank. Um, the turret does turn, but it's kind of like not centered when it turns. It's turning right here, right where this little hinge is. So when it turns, it kind of does this, and it looks a little weird, but turning it slightly looks just fine. You might also see, you can see the robot's head there, which is, um, when you're transforming it, you might want to face the robot's head towards its own back, like have it turning the air away. Otherwise, his face will be sticking up right here. So, yeah. Um, he does have a secondary turret on the top that also rotates, and it is actually centered, so it actually looks alright when you turn it. And these are also on, um, <coughs> these, these pieces are here actually on ball joints, so you can actually move them around. <coughs> Ugh, I got phlegm today. You can actually move them around on the ball joint, and they also swivel. So you can kind of do a lot of things with those, but the basic stock photo look is to have them like this. Don't care for much. I personally prefer have them kind of up like this. I'm not sure if that's what a realistic military tank does, but eh, I kind of like this look better. The only problem with my figure is that it does not seem to want to pop in place. There's a peg hole here, and there's a peg there. At least this is the only problem with vehicle mode. There's other issues this figure has, as you might be seeing right now. But when I try to peg it down, it'll peg for a moment, and then pop right up easily. It's not like one of those things will just don't touch it. No, it'll pop up on its own, see? So, I don't know why, but mine will not peg shut. It still looks alright, it's just, it's not technically all the way as far as down as it should be. But I do like the details. I like the little, like, brown we get here to kind of give it that camouflage look. I like we can actually see all the treads detailings in there, even though they're fake. I like the little... I'm not sure what you would call these. I know this is like to keep things from getting scraped up under the treads and all that, but I'm not sure what you'd call these, but I like how they look. I like all the little details like the hatch we have here, and just all the little like rivets and stuff. I also like we have these two canisters on the back that are actually used for robot mode, they're not just there for vehicle decoration. The one thing that's really weird is that these two pieces right here are these weird yellow that just kind of stick out. Like they're here as well, but they're a lot smaller, so not as noticeable. But here they're just a big blotch along with the gray pieces. Uh, it just sticks out a little bit, but yeah, there's some gray up here too. Dark gunmetal gray. The same color as like the front things and the guns here. Also, yes, I am missing the missile, but trust me, it looks really dumb with the missile in there. It's a tank. You just want to see the barrel. Now, for some vehicle comparisons, I thought I would compare them to, to some other deluxe tanks, such as the Generations Warpath. Or maybe the 2013 generation's Tankor, who's a much more cartoony tank. Or how about, if we're going to go really cartoony, the R.A.D. 2015 Megatronus. Yeah, we're going to get some really crazy cartoony tanks in here. And Warpath and, and Brawl are just like, help us get us out of here. These, these guys are kind of crazy. So yeah, there's some, some comparisons to some other deluxe tanks, if you're curious about how big he is. So hey, it got a really cool vehicle mode, I really like it. Transformation is pretty complex because he is a movie toy. You're going to start by undoing 
the treads at the front here, not really the treads, but like the armor on the treads, but it is attached to the back treads here. And then this piece will actually come out on double, on these double hinges, and it'll collapse over the rest of the treads. So you're just getting like big chunks of the treads out of the way, although these will be left behind right here. Next, you're going to want to just kind of start pulling this apart. You can see when you lift this up, you got this black piece of plastic here. And you actually see what it was turning on. Oh, and yeah, that's another problem. This pops off really easily. This hinge right here does not have like a metal rod going through it at all. It's just a normal one and it pops apart really easily. This has the arms in it. This, So we're just going to set that aside to make this easier. So you're going to lift this piece and you're going to go ahead and turn it around to where the, what would normally be on there would look kind of like this. Then you're going to grab these pieces and split them. You can see they kind of form the legs and you're just kind of going to straighten them a little. Then this is an interesting one. There's a hinge right back here. So you can actually see the, the treads and stuff actually pull back and wrap up behind the leg. It doesn't do much, but you can see it does reveal the leg detail a little bit more and makes his legs a little less blocky and kind of has these form heels. As for the feet themselves, like I mentioned, these canisters actually also do something. They form heels for the robot as well. Give them a lot of room to stand on actually. And then these pieces forward for the feet. Oh yeah, and let's get the feet out of the way. The heels can go back fully. So you can see, pretty simple, but gives them some good pair of legs. Now this is where the auto transformation kicks in. What you're supposed to do is grab the chest, and when you pull the chest down, the head will fold out, and these treads will fold up. But it doesn't always work properly. You can see as I fold it, pull, pull it down, the head will pop up, and one of the treads is popping up into place. But the other one, the gears are stuck or something. You see, actually see some of the gears in there. You see, they're not clear plastic, but the gimmicks still get stuck sometimes. But either way, the treads are up, the chest is down, and the head is out. So we're going to flip the head around. We're going to leave these pieces for a moment. Then this piece is going to come back and it'll actually wedge into there, keeping it, giving them a full back. And like I said, normally this would be right here. But it's easier to show you this by having them in separate pieces. So for the arms, this turret, the turret cannon is attached to this arm, and this piece up here is attached to that arm. So how we're going to do this is you're going to grab these pale pieces, you're going to open them up, and this gives you some room to move this piece. You're going to then grab the turret and start pulling it out, and it'll help pop, pop the arms out. Go ahead and fold this blade up and out of the way to separate the arms. Now this is the interesting thing. This, these pieces are on ball joints. That means this piece actually flips out, and you're supposed to flip it around until this tab right is on the inner part, and the arm is sticking out like this. I'm gonna try to show you this again, but it's really hard to, do, to kind of show what you need to do, other than just like kind of do it yourself. So you can see normally this piece with the tab is on the outside. We want to flip this around to the inside, and where the arm is now on the outside. So you're basically gonna completely flip this piece all the way around by flipping it out, turning it, and then flipping the part with the tab back inward, kind of like this. All right, so now what we're going to do, or go ahead and grab this turret as well and go ahead and flip it all the way up to where the two cans are pointing upward. Then we're going to attach it back onto this hinge like it's supposed to be. And then when you bring this turret down, it'll put these black panels with the tabs. You can see a little tab hole on the side of the chest. You actually attach his arms to his torso, which I always thought was a really cool bit of transformation. Because most Transformers have all their body parts together. They're just kind of moved out of the way or turned into something else. But this guy, you actually have to attach his arms to him, which that was kind of always thought was kind of cool. You can go ahead and close these panels back up, and it'll help hold these pieces in place. And the last bits for transformation is are the cannon, which you can see it's actually on this long little rivet of a hole, kind of this long stretch of that just kind of you know, it's just picked in this long hole. You're going to flip the can forward to where it's pointing the same way as the arm, then you're going to push it back along that trench. And it will pop in place where it won't move around anymore. And the last pieces are these two things you can do. The stock photo should just kind of be like this, but I don't like much like that. And while it will cover up some of the chest detail there, I do kind of like doing this. to kind of give him like an armored look. And it gets these chest panels out of the way so you can move it, give his arms a bit more movement. But that's up to you. And that is Desert Brawl in his robot mode. There we go, let's get him centered on camera. Okay, let's go ahead and get the comparisons out of the way. Here he is next to Warpath, the Generations Warpath. Here he is next to the Thrilling 30 Generations Tankor. 
who's quite a bit shorter. And here he is with the RID 2015 Megatronus. And it's kind of just interesting to see that they're all tanks and they're all deluxes, but each series has like a different outlook for them. Like we have Tankor, who's based on who's based on the Beast Machines Tankor. Very cartoony, very squat, but very bulky and like looks like he can handle things, and not a lot of kibble. Or RID Megatron is also not a lot of kibble, but a lot more flat and a lot more fearsome looking, even though he's actually a little bit skinnier. But he has a lot more of a leader, or at least a commander look to him. Or even between the two more realistic tanks, their robot modes, while they're both kind of fearsome and like very warrior, very, you know, ch like very do not mess with them look to them, they still have a very different look. Like, we have Brawl here is a lot more like stuff hanging off of him and but utilizes his pieces, it has a lot more like a really shaky look and doesn't utilize his kibble very well. It usually just kind of kibble covers the pieces and then, because you can see a lot of chunks of the tank are just kind of hanging off of him. The treads up here, the treads down here, the tank, the top of the tank. Most of his robot mode was hidden away, while Warpath on the other hand utilizes his robot mode pieces. Like his treads actually become his arms and his legs. They're not just hanging off of him, he's actually using them as his pieces. And for that, he gets a lot less kibble, and he has a lot more of a bulky look because he's actually using all this, all this kibble to make him look bigger and stronger. And he even has a similar idea of the, having the cannons coming up beside his head. Same with Bra with Brawl here. He has these little pieces that come out on these hinges and up on these ball joints where he can get over sh the shoulder cannons. But again, I think Warpath does it a bit better. But that's enough about those guys. I just thought it was interesting to see like all the different ways that they've handled tank trance deluxes and all the different looks they get. Let's focus on the one we're reviewing today. We'll get to those other ones eventually. So yeah, like I said, he can have the over the shoulder cans, and his overall robot mode is really cool looking. Like, considering he had a leader class that looked pretty good, but was really, like, really crappy because it broke really easily, the deluxe turned out really well. He is a really good looking figure. He has a lot of little details. All along the arms, you can see a little wiring. On the legs, you can see a lot of little details on the insides, on the hips, even on the crotch. And if we move these out of the way, another way you can kind of put them is kind of just kind of off like this. Kind of making this like chainmail look. You can actually see a lot of little details all up the chest and all around the head even. And the head itself is a pretty nice look too. It's got nice orange eyes that do catch light pretty well so he doesn't look dead most of the time. That's why one problem with light piping is a lot of times it doesn't work too well. But like Warpath here who, if you look at his eyes, he looks like he's turned off right now. You know I mean like a robot being turned off, not you know, that way. But you get what I mean, he doesn't look like he's active. Well, Brawl here catches the light pretty well and his eyes glow pretty well. So I typically prefer painted eyes, but here it works well enough that I can let it go. Even with all this kibble right behind his head right there, he still catches the light pretty well. There's even some detailed things along the back here that you only see in this mode, and it's still buried behind his head and everything. So yeah, there's a lot of cool little details that you can catch. Like on his little thing, on his little weapon, knife weapon here, he also has a really, really tiny little Gatling gun, or chain gun, attached to it. Or on the back of his cannon, he has another, like, missile launcher kind of thing, or missile pods on the back of his cannon that he can also use. Because of course, this rotates around and you could give him the missile pods instead. So yeah, there's a lot of cool little things you can spot all over him. His articulation, eh, not the best. Head is on a ball joint and it works pretty well. Although when pushing it back, you could actually start pushing his head back in from transformation. But that happens with a lot of Transformers. Still works out better in the fall Cybertron brawl. Like I said, this whole piece rotates, it's on hinges, it's on ball joints, it's got all kinds of little things you can move the cans around. All kinds of ways you can move this however you please, I prefer just leaving it like this. Ball joint at the shoulder, works pretty well. Swivel above the elbow, the elbow is palm up only so when you use it, you kinda got his claws going upward. But, it works alright considering he has weapons attached to both of his arms. It looks just fine to it like that anyway, giving him like an underhanded look when he uses it. And the claw thing is on a hinge as well, so you can move it around to kind of either get closer in for like a sh for like a slashing motion or outward for like a stab. So gives it a pretty good look. Um, it looks like his you would have a waist swivel, but it's hard to tell. 
and if he did, you would have to undo a lot of pieces because the arm, the whole backpack gets in the way, and that's attached to the arms. So I don't think he has a waist swivel. If he does, it's not really usable. His hips are on a ball joint, but they do clash. Like when you try to go outward, they do get stuck because of all the plastic here. But going forward or backward isn't too bad. Well, going forward's fine, but going back, the kibble once again gets in the way. Um, you do have, because of his transformation, you do have sideways knees. And of course, you do have normal knees that actually work pretty well. They go, yeah, they go 90 degrees. They could probably, yeah, they just stop at 90 degrees because then it hits this panel. But 90 degrees is all I ask for a knee joint. And ankles, you don't really have much. You could technically move his toes, but you can't really do anything with that. I guess you could kind of get a stepping motion, but a little more like he's tiptoeing, like, okay, don't want the ears to hear me. Don't let Megatron catch me. So yeah, not much, but it's an, it's a, it's usable. He does have some good poses. You can get some really cool like posing going on with him. So yeah, it's it's it gets hampered a lot by his kibble issues, but I've seen worse in the movie line, and I think he's still a good figure. It, there's worse in the Revenge of the Fall, and there's worse in Age of Extinction even. So while his kibble it, kibble does limit him a bit. You know, he's a big bulky guy. You're not trying to get any crazy poses out of him anyway. And yeah, that's Sprawl, Desert Brawl. I think he is a really overall cool figure. I don't have a lot to say about him because movie figures tend not have much of a personality. But I love the details on him in both robot and tank mode. I do wish he would hold together a bit better in, in tank mode. And his robot mode does need a little bit of help with the articulation, but I do like the gimmicks he has. I like that he actually has his tank turret as his under his arm cannon, as well as optional missile pods if you want them. And he has other weapons. Like, he is armed to the teeth. He's ready to mess somebody up. You could even use these for weapons. He could, like, bear hug somebody and just stab. He has death nipples, okay? Death nipples on a Transformer. You cannot argue with... Death nipples. Okay, yeah, I'm just getting weird now, but death nipples. Don't mess with them. But yeah, that's Desert Raw. So yeah, I think he is a cool figure. If you like the, the the movie designs and how detailed or how weird they can sometimes be, I think he's worth picking up. There's two versions of him out there, but I would go for the desert version just because I think the colors are a bit better on him. His paint's a bit better. Especially that silver paint on the face. I think the original one had it too, but it looks so much nicer with this like beige yellow color. And I like all the paint he put on. They put on him. He has a lot of good paint. He has a lot of good colors. I think he just makes him look unique for a tank transform because we don't have too many like desert color tanks. Most of the ones we get, we get like the force, the typical force military colors. So yeah, that's brawl. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you get this figure, and I hope you have a nice day. Take care.